Your Excellency, the President of the General Assembly, Madam Assistant Secretary General, Honorable Delegates to the General Assembly, and if I may be allowed to say to my colleagues who've come from all around the world, 52 countries indeed, from the cooperative movement to be here on this important day for our movement, may I say, dear fellow cooperators, cooperatives are a reminder to the international community that it is possible to pursue both economic viability and social responsibility. The words, ladies and gentlemen, of the Secretary General of this august organization, Mr. Ban Ki-moon. In those few words, he encapsulated the cooperative model of business and the capacity it has, in the words of your own slogan for this international year, to build a better world. I quote again, Cooperatives contribute directly to improve the standards of living of half the world's population. The words, ladies and gentlemen, from the background paper for the United Nations World Summit on Social Development in Copenhagen in 1995. Words built upon facts. They reflect the fact that for nearly 200 years, cooperatives have been creating jobs across the world. And currently, over 100 million of the world's citizens are employed within a cooperative. They reflect the fact that cooperatives since their inception have not sought to ape their corporate competitors and maximize their profits, but rather to meet the needs of their member owners. No wonder then that today the cooperative movement is owned by nearly one billion people across the globe. And they reflect the fact that the cooperatives have been a powerful player in embedding civil society across the world through the powerful medium of the creation of member-owned businesses. Businesses built on the principles of sound democracy, a commitment to an economic return to members on their trade with the cooperative and not the size of their shareholding, and businesses having a wider social engagement as a core part of their DNA. For nearly two centuries, We've been helping to reduce conflict, build community cohesion, build skills and expertise, develop local leadership potential, and supporting women into positions of economic activity and leadership in their communities, all developed with the intellectual underpinning of the value of collective endeavor in sustainable member-owned local enterprises. In effect, Cooperatives have taken millions out of poverty with dignity by helping them to build their own cooperative enterprises. Ladies and gentlemen, our commitment to our democratic and social agenda is built on a sound and successful member-owned business model. What is more, a business model that can compete successfully in the marketplace with other forms of business and thrive. Today, as this General Assembly launches the International Year of Cooperatives, the International Cooperative Alliance publishes its Global 300, the list of the largest 300 of our many hundreds of thousands of cooperatives across the world. Together, these 300 cooperatives are worth 1.6 trillion US dollars, equivalent to the ninth largest economy in the world and they operate in some of the most competitive industries in the world, banking, insurance, agriculture, retail, health, utilities, and others. The 300 list includes cooperatives from 25 different countries. Our challenge, ladies and gentlemen, is to make sure that more people in decision-making positions, or those who exercise influence in the political or economic spheres, or indeed in the media, know about the size, scope and scale of the cooperative sector of the economy and the work it does to sustain and build communities across the world and its capacity to do so much more. And that was one of the first messages coming this morning from the round table that was held here uh, in this building. The collapse of the financial sector of the global economy has had tragic results for families and communities in many parts of the developed world in particular. It is well documented now, not least by the International Labour Organization, that there is one part of the financial sector that has continued to grow its asset base over the last four years, where account holders and deposits have grown, and which has continued to lend and indeed 
grown its lending to families and businesses, the cooperative financial institutions, of course. Cooperatives are people-based businesses and, unlike their competitors, are not constitutionally bound to work to maximize profits for their shareholders. This point has been made very strongly here this morning by the speakers at our roundtable, Cooperative Enterprises Build a Better World, Contributions to Sustainable Development. Each of the contributors made a compelling case that the success, longevity and growth of their cooperative depends on a strong and abiding relationship with their member owners, on their trust and confidence in the priorities of the business that they own, in which they can play a significant role, and in which together they are the key stakeholder. And that is the same whether the cooperative is one of the early forms of cooperatives, banking, retail, insurance, or agriculture, or whether it's one of the leading edge radical new community co-ops in the developed world, or a crucial small village savings and credit co-op in Africa. What was also significant from the speakers this morning was the way in which they had a common cause to make, from Mondragon in the Basque country of Spain to Rabobank in the Netherlands or the supply and marketing cooperatives in China. Each of them showed that regardless of size, each has a clear and continuing commitment to international development and are actively engaged in what they consider one of the commitments that comes from being a cooperative. That work would be much easier and much more productive, however, if the cooperative model of business was taken more seriously and each of the contributors used their own experience to make the case for three key points. Firstly, member-owned cooperatives are a serious business model with scale. And so cooperatives are asking that the specific and unique legal and financial framework of a cooperative is fully acknowledged and recognized in public policy and regulation. Secondly, member-owned cooperatives are values-led businesses. Our values are integral to our business model, not just a marketing tool in the shape of a corporate social responsibility report once a year. They define our identity and our brand. They are part of our DNA. And so cooperatives are asking that their model of business is giving equal promotion with the stockholder model. And thirdly, our governance model is people-led. At a time when people, especially young people, whom this recession is hitting so cruelly, young people are cynical of the political and economic models that dominate their lives, when they're looking for a voice in North Africa, the Middle East, in Wall Street and across the world, and when they're looking for impact, the cooperative is not only an effective governance model, it's a compelling one. And cooperatives are asking that there should be a greater diversification of the global economy to ensure a level playing field for the member-owned model of business. Let me conclude, President, by saying that our movement, because that's what it is, a movement, is conscious of the great gift that the United Nations has given us with this international year. A gift that recognizes the cooperative impact on the socio-economic development of the world and its capacity to do so much more. We wish to put on record our particular thanks to the government of Mongolia who put the original proposal for this year on the table and to the unprecedented large number of governments that put their signature on the resolution to give effect to the year. It is an honor and a privilege for me to take this podium in this iconic chamber, ladies and gentlemen. I'm proud to do so in the name of the one billion cooperators across the world, and I pay tribute to the great work they do across this world to make it a better place. Together, cooperatives will work to make this international year a powerful restatement of the cooperative ideal. And it is our aim, Mr. President, that on the 31st of December 2012, we will be able to pivot from a successful international year of cooperatives to a decade of cooperative growth. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.